Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Game Gear was a fighting game based on the television show of the same name. Back in 1994, Power Rangers was all the rage and the merchandising was insane. Toys, comics, paraphernalia, and of course, video games. You could get your Power Rangers fix on just about every console available at the time. This one in particular was one of two handheld editions, the other being on Game Boy. The developers decided the Game Gear edition was to be a fighting game, and it wasn't uncommon to see the major genre differences between each game. Now, before we get into it, I have to mention, as a fan of the show, I was disappointed by the game's intro not using the iconic opening line of the major antagonist, Rita Repulsa. Ah! After 10,000 years, I'm free! It's time to conquer Earth! A missed opportunity and not a great start. When it comes to fighting games, Power Rangers on the Game Gear is actually quite simplistic. There was only two action buttons to choose from, one for punch, and one for kick. However, they got clever and made the press of both buttons count as a third button. This opened up more combos because it applied to all attack types, like ground, running, jumping, and special attacks. That said, the D-pad options for special attacks were very limited. Every character had down, down, forward, forward inputs, so every character only had three special moves. And every character basically played the same, except for how their special moves went off. This was to make things easier for a younger target audience, and honestly, it didn't take away from the variety of attacks too much. For a handheld fighting game, this one had a pretty big roster, 16 in total. However, to keep things more in line with the show, some opponents were locked out depending on the character you chose. If you selected a ranger, then all megazords were not an opponent type. Likewise, if you selected a megazord, then all the rangers would be gone as opponents. If you chose a monster, all the roster was open to fight. The controls were not ideal. While input seemed easy on paper, in practice the control response was sloppy. Sometimes you get into a groove, then suddenly the input decides you didn't press a button or walked in a direction. Just because. Now, I will outright admit that I am not great at fighting games, however I can immediately tell when my inputs are getting eaten, and this game has way too much of that. The easy mode difficulty was way too easy, to the point that when I just stood there, it made no attempts to attack for at least a whole minute. Meanwhile, when I bumped up to normal difficulty, the CPU was cheap and outright cheating. Although, maybe that had something to do with the sloppy controls. I didn't even dare try hard mode. Playing the story mode was pretty fun. They got pretty creative to make it feel like you're participating in the action beats of an episode. You start by selecting a ranger out of the first five. The green ranger is selectable later on in the story. First, you have to fend off a wave of putty patrol, the henchmen of the bad guys. These were just the putty fighter character, but with low CPU level and slivers of HP. Then the stronger monsters would jump in. Once you defeat them, Rita will make her monster grow, at which point you will control the Megazord to lay the finishing blow to the monster. I really digged the final explosion to cap it all off. Fun as the story mode was, the controls and CPU really takes away from the fun factor of this game. The longer I played, the less I cared to continue. Gameplay gets a 4 out of 10. The great thing about fighting games is that the environments don't have to be large, so the detail tends to be much nicer and focused. They look very much like the locales from the show. Character models were detailed, but not so big they felt too big for the screen. Of course, there were a bit of sprite reuse between the red, blue, and black rangers, as well as the pink and yellow rangers sharing a more feminine sprite. It was nice to see the green ranger get his own pose rather than just be a red ranger copy with a shield tacked on top. I was once again impressed with the shading capabilities of the game gear thanks to the artwork of this game. Definitely a sense of depth was felt here. The only boring looking screens were the mode select, options, and maybe the character select. The graphics of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers gets a surprising 10 out of 10. As with any Power Rangers game, we first have to listen to the awesome theme song. That said, the hardware limitations unfortunately didn't hit the hype. The rest of the soundtrack works, but gets really repetitive fast. Listen, I love the tagline of Go Go Power Rangers, but I think hearing it thousands of times in 30 minutes is a bit excessive and lazy. Thankfully, this is a fighting game, and we're not really paying too much attention to the music. 
sound effects are great in this game. They all fit, don't sound annoying, and hold a basic gravity to them. Any sounds that could be considered annoying were attached to rare special moves and did give a good sense of discomfort because you're getting your butt handed to you. Overall, music and sound for this game is a 4 out of 10. Since I didn't own a Game Gear, I played this at a friend's house. I was a big fan of the show at the time, so I was inclined to play it quite a few times. That's probably why I kept playing it though. I was no good at it. And of course, now I know that input lag was a big factor. Good times with friends, but I could have said that even without this game in the mix. Nostalgia Hit is just a 1 out of 10. For a Game Gear game, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers looked pretty fantastic visually, plus the way the story mode is presented was pretty neat, but that's about it. My memory of this game definitely was clouded by nostalgia, but firing it up again made me recall just how frustrating this game is to play. It only took me 10,000 years to figure that out.